Hey everybody, Barry here again. This is gonna be a lot of wiring. Oh, I have a lot of wiring to do. Hopefully not a lot of modifications, just like installing it all. While we're here, let's begin this video with everything that I have to install and what, if at all, I have to modify. For anybody who's new or just coming on board, this is my 2005 Silverado with an 05 Escalade front clip on it. It has an aluminum 5.3 with a sloppy stage two cam that I'm in the process of building. And the best part is it's all wheel drive. When I scrapped the Escalade, I took the front diff and the transfer case and it's all bolted in here now, waiting for drive shafts and everything to make it run. It has two inch drop keys in the front that are adjusted pretty much all the way up because I need to match the back. I will be lowering the back just a little bit and bringing it down level then with the front. If I can make it work, I'll also be using all of the Escalade cladding and the rear bumper. That pretty much covers the details of the truck. Let's look at some wiring. Starting with the engine harness, this is from an 05 Silverado. It's drive-by wire, which I will be using, at least for now, just to get the truck running and driving. It is a bone stock harness. I won't be modifying it. There's just a few things that I won't be plugging in, like some of the EVAP stuff. Right over here is an 03 single cab long bed, four wheel drive chassis harness. It was not electric shift, so hopefully there'll be minimal junk in this. Plus it was a base model truck, so no extras to pull out. This is the, I'll call it front bumper harness. That has the plugs for the HID headlights, all the Escalade stuff. And it also has the ambient temperature sensor and all that stuff. So if I do decide to put the Escalade mirror in, then it will work. Also, you can see here it has factory electric fans. The only bit of modification I have to do or repair is the guy who had the truck before me cut off the harness with the two plugs for the fan. So I will pull this whole section out of another harness instead of joining those wires. This was a V6 truck, so I do need to remove that gas pedal because it was drive-by cable and then install the drive-by wire pedal. I'm going to remove the bed to make it a little bit easier to install all this wiring and tie it in place. The cab is bolted on. It'd be nice not to have to disturb that if I don't have to. If I do, then I'll just lift the cab up with the lift and then go from there. I don't have a lot of the factory clips that snap the wiring harness loom onto the frame. I have some, but I might have to adapt some of those rubber sleeve metal straps. I'd like to know if you can buy these new, I, you can probably buy them from GM, but if I assume they're like 10 bucks each, so I'm not even gonna check. I have seen on Amazon, there's packs of different types of them, but I haven't gotten that far yet. So if I need them, I'll buy them. But if you know of a place to get a whole bunch of them for a little amount of money, ship to Canada, then let me know. I'm gonna just go pull the bed off this off camera and then we'll jack it up and start looking. I'm kind of having a hard time figuring out where to start with the frame chassis. The only hard mounted part on this whole harness is the ABS block right there. That actually bolts on with a mount and the harness clips directly to the ABS block. So I think that might be a good place to start. I will add that this is for a single cab long bed. This ain't that. So I think everything from the fuse block back to the ABS module, maybe to the gas tank, will be static. Everything from there back is gonna be two feet too long. So when I get back here, the next hard mounted part is right here. This clips on, not to this one specifically, but to a tail light junction block right there. So that's the next hard mounted part. So I know I have something that clips in in the back and I have something that clips into the middle. That's gonna give me an extra amount of wire, maybe say right here somewhere. And what I'm gonna do, instead of cutting the harness, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna cut the harness and have to splice in joins and, and be afraid that it's gonna corrode or whatever. I'm just gonna sort of whip the harness like this if I can. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the brake lines from this ABS block because it's been a lot easier to get at on the bench here. I couldn't get that unplugged. It looks kind of gross. So I think I might just leave it on there and not stress that out. I'll just take these here off and then bolt it on after. Follow me.
There'll be a faster way of doing this. <laughs> when I put this back together, I'm gonna put in all new brake lines and I think I may use a NICOP, the nickel copper brake lines, they're amazing. And so that'll allow me to reuse these nuts. They don't look that pretty, but I think they should still work fine. This is going to make a huge mess of brake fluid everywhere, isn't it? Well, I hope I don't strip all the treads out on this thing. I have to get another one. I can't use uh, loosening oil on this because I think most of them are all petroleum based, which is not very good for the seals. Well, the threads all look good anyway. And here's the mounting bracket. I felt that it was easier to pry the bracket apart, remove the block, and then mount this back on. But I think it would have been just as easy to take it all off in one piece. <laughs> Pretty sure there's an ear missing off of that. I will have to make a tab and weld it onto the bottom of this bracket. Like I said earlier, I don't want to have just two mounting points because it'll be doing this all the time and I don't want it to crack the frame or break this bracket off and end up causing damage to my brake line. It just had to come right out through a weld, didn't it? <laughs> well, there's the ABS bracket bolted in. Now I'm gonna put the block on there and get the clamp fixed. All bolted in, looks good. Man, this thing doesn't look that pretty. It's awfully corroded. But it'll have to do for now. It looks like I should be able to kind of sneak it in by here. But it looks going to be deceiving. <laughs> it's not going to be as easy as it looks, eh? I probably should unbolt it. I assume none of this is going to be easy. easy to see. Okay, so we got that. Oh, all my fingers. Ah, be careful. Okay, and now I'm going to stick that into the grommet there. And then I just got to kind of knock that bushing in, but I will do that when I get it bolted in place. The ABS block started getting a little bit weird when I screwed the bolts in again after I put the bracket on. So I've got this piece of metal here bent up so that I can drill it out, bolt it to the frame. And this is on the same angle as the lower leg of the bracket. And I'm going to bolt it to the frame and then weld it directly to the bracket and then never look at it again. I don't want to take it off because I really don't want to twist the bolt off or kind of twist up the bracket like I've seen done a bunch of times. So this is gonna work just fine. If you're thinking, hey Barry, shouldn't you have done that when there was nothing on the frame at all? Yes, I should have. <laughs> I just didn't know I was using ABS until like yesterday. Forgive me for the atrocities that I have committed. I'm so glad it's blurry. Anyway, it's mounted and it looks fine. And this gotta go back oh yeah oh yeah it's definitely a bit long <laughs> yeah it should be easy to shorten up though i thought the big end was the back but no it's just this like this is not a big deal at all probably about 10 or 15 wires there maybe maybe not even that many this has to go forward so i'll do that this stuff is very hard to film in real time. I'm just going to run wire. It's going to be kind of a pain, but uh, see in a minute when it's done. Yeah, I think I'm getting somewhere. I found that there's a hole right there where this thing snaps in. Then I found that there's a hole right there that this one is broken and won't snap into. My ground wires will go right there 
where I cut off the old ones because I didn't need those. Uh, those will go there. Then my harness sneaks up by the frame. This is the right ABS wire, so that'll go all the way over there. And then it'll go up. This red piece here will go right into the fuse block. Seems like good a time as any to install the tail light junction block so that I'll know how short I need my wires to be. Install. I know some of this stuff is gonna be different. I know this is for something. Pretty sure it's actually for an EVAP canister sensor, maybe the vent valve. Which probably wouldn't be a bad idea to hook that up. This here, oh, looks like an oxygen sensor. That must be for the fuel pump. And then another EVAP solenoid that'll go right here. Then we go all the way back here. We've got a ground that will connect right there. I just gotta crimp an end onto it. That'll go right there. We've got our blue. So what do we got? Black, blue, purple. Why wouldn't we just call it blurple? That's done. And this was, I think that was a backup alarm maybe. And yeah, I'll replace that. So basically we have that much wire that I need to, oh my, that much wire that I need to shorten up. Which really is not a big deal at all. I got to check and see where the harness clips on. I don't know if it goes along the top of the frame or not. I don't remember. I know there's a pad that goes here because there's one there. So I think the bed actually sits pretty much right down on this. There's a brake line or brake hose bracket that goes here. I don't think the wiring harness goes through the frame, but I don't see where it clips on. I'll have to go look at another truck and come back to this. It's snowing outside now, so I'm not going to go out and mess with that wiring. Plus, I'm cold. I'm very cold. All day. With the heat on blast, still cold. So we all know where that goes. Anyway, I'm going to do indoor activities today. Here we can see the headlight harness. Headlight harnesses. What is this one for? This has... That one's not very corroded looking, so I don't think it's the right one. That's not the right one either. Ah, here we are. I see that neon green plug. This is the harness from the Escalade. This is the headlight plug for the HID factory headlights. Like I mentioned, it has pieces missing that I'm gonna pull out of this harness. Somebody was like, ooh, electric fan, snippity snip snip. And we can see right here, this one still has the two uh, plugs for the factory fan. So all I'm gonna do is deloom it, run it back uh, here, and then take this whole section of wire, put it over there. I'm gonna have to take it, obviously take this out of it. And I think it may go through this uh, plug right here because this is where it goes into the PCM. That way there's no cutting, no splicing, no nothing, just click. Obviously it's gonna be painstakingly slow, so I won't do it all in real time. I'll stop in for little updates here and there. Well, it didn't take long to run into a potential issue. We can see right here, two electric fan plugs. Three wires go toward the destination. One doesn't. I'm not sure where the ground comes in on this. This here is two small wires. That is probably 12 gauge if I had to guess. So it's gonna go that way. It'd be cool if it come like popped out of here somewhere on its own ground, but I don't I don't anticipate that happening. Maybe. Maybe it'll go right to the very end plug and I'll have to strip the whole harness to do it. Figuring it out. Plugs. Goes down the harness, down here, down here, and kicks off on its own with this little two-part harness here. And then we go out to a ground lead. Much gooder. The only issue is it's actually two wires that go into the same ground. Both wires do run in the same direction, and both of them go up into the main harness. So I'm just going to explore a little further up this way. This is actually best case scenario. 
if I have to, if it gets too monotonous, tedious, I'll just chop it off, say right here on a straight section and then join the ground to the ground. Again, I don't wanna do that if I don't have to. So I'm glad I didn't just go ahead and cut it off, <laughs> which is what I would have done before. I ran it up here and it seems that both grounds go into the fuse block. I don't know and I don't like actually how uh, this is cut here. That's very annoying. Looks like I'm going to have to repair them anyway. Ugh, that sucks. I didn't see that before. So this is where stuff gets weird. I don't see where these wires go or why. We've got a green wire that's cut off right here. We have two blue wires where one, huh, neither one of them goes out. Hmm. Oh, these are for the PCM. Why would they do that? Oh, that's annoying. Well, all is not lost. All is not lost. I can de-pin from the PCM plug, which I think will be that one. We've got a green. Uh, we'll find out anyway. And join the green and the blue. Possibly two blues. Okay, no. The two blues go into one right there and go out here. So that's fine. I can join the green and the blue. And that'll be a lot better joining two, say, 16 gauge wires than trying to wire in this plug with these massive wires here. I don't like soldering and, and heat shrinking really, really big wires like that, especially high load wires like that is. These don't have any load on them at all, really. Maybe a tenth of an amp. So it'll be no problem to join those. I'd rather not have to do it, but this is kind of what I'm left Here's with. my harness. Now, let's start out the Escalade side. I'm not a believer in fate or predetermined destinies. I am glad somebody cut that plug off though. That is because, we look down here. Oh, seriously. And, oh look. Ooh, a wire is broken off. Ooh, a wire is broken off. Ooh. <laughs> Man, that St. John's salt air. That'll corrode anything, wouldn't it? So, yeah, yeah. Probably not a bad idea to replace that one. So either way, there's no sense for me to run these wires all the way back there and depin them from the PCM because I don't have anything to put back in. So either way, I have to join them anyway. So I'll cut them back here probably further and join those two wires or three wires, whatever you want to call it. And I will now run them through the harness. I'm going to take note of where each wire goes because it can get real, real complicated looking when I don't label anything. Actually, look at this. We've got a separate plug with a blue wire and a green wire. So it only goes right there anyway. That's perfect. I'll just cut it off here and then rejoin that plug back in and we're good to go. I'm about to go ahead and replace the damaged corroded harness with the less damaged and corroded harness. I just need to take a moment and look at where it grafts in. It looks like they have the, pretty much the same bend in them. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and maybe put some tape or something around right here. That way I'll be able to start, uh, remove this harness, tape that one in, remove, tape, remove, tape. Just in little baby steps. I was talking away to Cass on the phone and kind of got ahead of myself here a little bit, but I have the wire joined here and there, and I twisted it, soldered it, and then used this dual wall glue heat shrink. So if there's any a chance that it's gonna last forever, this is, is pretty much it. And it's on a straight section too, so there's there's not gonna be any crease or bend or anything like that. And this one here is on a straight section. So I know there are better options to soldering, but this is the best I got. And I think it'll work just fine. The plug is right out here. I measured it, it was 10 inches from the uh, join or whatever back to the fuse block. And that's what I did here. I don't wanna have to try to pull this thing or you know that kind of thing and make it crack or stretch. So far so good. This is actually working exceptionally well. 
all loomed up. Loom, 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 loom. Well, not loom, taped. And I wanted to do the same thing that the factory has done, and that's completely taped the whole harness. Missed a spot right there, but I'll deal with that after. And this is where the factory plugs come out. Comes out in the same spot that those did. And now I'm just going to run the grounds until they come out wherever it is up here somewhere. Here we go. Until they come out of the same spot right there. This was a bit of a daunting task when I first started it and now it's, I'm, I'm confident with it. So that's kind of cool. Well, I finished putting everything in, getting all the wiring taped in and stuff. And then I was like, oh, cool. More fun. So I'm getting somewhere with it. So this pin right here was the one that was corroded out. You can see it right here. It's very green, not much good. I realized that in this scrap harness that I have here, that it uses the same exact type of connector as what's in this one. So I just cut off a wire, the one that's not rusty or anything, and now I'm just gonna join them. That'll make it way easier. And well, I already had to join wires anyway, so I'll go back here further where it's not corroded. Join it in, and I'm gonna spray this with something. Uh, I don't know exactly what, but something that keeps it out of the weather, because we got a little bit of green going on down in there too, so maybe some electrical contact cleaner, and then I'll glob a bunch of dielectric grease in there, because I don't want this stuff to happen again. Perfect. All fixed up. I pop the fuse block back together, and I'm gonna you know, clean it up, dielectric grease, all that stuff before I put it together. I am absolutely happy that this is going to work now. I don't see any more corrosion. I pulled on that wire like really hard. It does not want to come off. If it does give me issues, I'll cut another connector out of one like that, pop it in. But I'd rather not have to disturb that if I don't have to. Well, I guess I'll start at the back again. It's snowing out and it's really cold. So I might as well go outside and see where I got to run that wiring. Yep. Still snowy and cold. So this is the frame that I took that harness off of. If we get down here and look. Yeah, frame's a bit kinky. We got one big clip here right behind the gas tank and shock cross member that holds the harness. On the shock cross member, there's a clip right here. Behind that, we have our brake hose bracket. And then the rear shock cross member, there's one going in sort of sideways. So that should get me that far. And then there's one back here on the spare tire bracket. Stick. That's, well, that's where I need to put my harness. All right, hopefully I got enough clips. If not, then I'll just use zip ties or something for now. But at least now I know where my harness can go so that I know where to shorten it up. So it looks like clips in here, down into this harness, <clears throat> or down into that clip, into this one here. But I think, I think I'd like to do it between here. That way, this one can be made bigger or smaller or whatever. But right here, it's right next to the gas tank, the bed, the frame, all that. So I think I'd like to leave that as it is. Maybe do it right here. I did consider cutting and shortening the harness, but I think I'd like to keep it all together like I was saying. So I tied it up, 
I just looped it back and forth so that I can take up the slack and put it down. I put two loops or two runs down into this bracket here and then taped it the whole way around so that it can't come off. Taped it all up here. And it's clicked into that harness down here. It's a little bit low right there, but I do have to put one more clip in down and under there. This is the fuel pump and evap wire here. I would say I'll probably just plug in the fuel pump one. I don't know if I'll be using the evap stuff. Not likely, but I'll leave it there just in case. Now I'm gonna clean up the frame here for the ground. The ground hooks in right there. So I'll just, um, so I'll just clean that up with the grinder there and then get another one of these little clip things and it clips in right there. I clamped a new end or crimped a new end out of my grounds here, this nice heavy duty one. And I've got some synthetic dielectric grease. Just kind of gonna glob it on there a little bit. Feed that into the tread. I'm gonna make sure this whole surface is not gonna corrode. And also help it get good connection. I'm just gonna overuse it. I got lots there, so I'm gonna put this on every connection on the entire truck that I can get at. There we go. And same thing back here. I don't know if you can overuse this stuff, but I intend to. One thing here that's kind of freaking me out is I'm pretty sure this is supposed to click into one of these spots here, but it has a trailer wiring connector wired into it. A random wire coming out here. I think I'm going to pull this apart and see what's in there. This, if anything, is not ideal. Not ideal at all. Time to go strip another harness. Well, I already, I already said several times that I didn't want to go cutting and splicing wires, but it seems that I've been left with no choice. This is out of the Escalade. We have, what do we got? Two greens, blue, yellow, black, brown, red. What do we got here? Two greens, black, yellow, brown, red. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, isn't that just fun? Why do we have an extra wire and where does it go? This harness is out of the single cab V6 Grandpa Special, no extras truck. Why does it have more wires than the Escalade? I wonder. From what I can tell, the extra wire is this one light blue here. Everything else seems to match. What would it be, I wonder? Well, I'll deal with that extra wire after. I think I'm gonna go ahead and join all these wires in. Although, I am gonna go and put the back bumper on so that I can put this right in place have it clicked in, and then I can join the wires to the appropriate length. And the back bumper is right over here in the way anyway, so I might as well bolt it on. Well, I sprayed a little bit of honey goo on the bolts just to make sure that they're not gonna twist off or anything because those brackets, those bolt brackets are looking kind of rough. I got them pretty much bolted in. I just need to put in the uh, hitch that bolts up to this and then bolts up to the bottom of here so everything lines up. Then I can plug in the 
license plate light connector. That one goes right here. And then the hitch is over here and it has the place where the, and it has the spot here for the trailer wiring connector so I can connect it on there. So I got it figured out. I skipped ahead a little bit further than I was expecting to, but Joey stopped by and gave me a hand. So now we just did some stuff, did some work. This blue wire is for the center high mount stoplight, that thing. Uh, apparently this is for if you have like a truck camper or a fifth wheel or something and want to use the high stop light this is it for whatever reason they include it in and i just uh, folded it over and used heat shrink so that it won't corrode up in case there is ever a time that i need that which i doubt will happen also i joined all my wires i said that i didn't want to make them too long but then i went and did that sort of accidentally but hey i've got a little clip right here that i can clip that on there and it'll follow the frame and then go down to the plug. Or I can probably, I don't know, bring it over this way or something. Either way, you won't see a bunch of wires dangling down. I did join them. Of course, solder, dual wall with glue, heat shrink. Stuff's amazing. You can see the glue coming out there. So it's, it's sealed. And I also did the twisty thing and uh, soldered and all that. So it's got the best chance of surviving that it will ever have. Also, I got the plug put in down here and I'm gonna fill that very well with dielectric grease. I did the same back here. You can see there, all dielectric grease. You can see it's a little bit brown right there. That's because the ground terminal was corroded. It was just sort of green looking, but didn't lose any of its structural rigidity from what I saw. So I scraped the life out of it, scraped it really well. Sprayed some honey goo on it and then dielectric greased it. I also went ahead and plugged the harness into the back of the trailer connector here and I ohmed it from that one corroded terminal to the ground wire right here before I joined them and I had 1.5 ohms over about two feet of wire and it was still a little bit corroded before I actually scraped the terminal off so that's just fine. The connection is just fine and I'm also going to put dielectric grease inside that cover like I said. Well, I think I'm ready to put the bed back on, but before I do, I'd really like to put this in. It was outside for most of the summer and some of the winter, and it's it's got some ice in it. I don't know if there's any ice inside the tank because all this was facing down like that, and I had it tipped sort of like this so that it would run off, but it didn't. Uh, there's a lot of liquid inside the tank, so I'm going to... I'm gonna see if the tank actually works. This is pretty spicy looking here. That is not real nice looking. I'm just gonna put 12 volts on the uh, the wires here and, and see if I can get all the liquid out, see if the pump works. I think I've got the two wires stripped. Correct wires, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Huh, it works. Well, I don't have enough cans right now, so I'm going to go and put the tank in. I'll leave this pigtail connected so that I can pump the gas out later on. And that'll get that off the floor. And I'll be able to put the tank in here and put the bed back on it. The little rolling cart's quite the unit for doing this by yourself. Just roll it in under the truck and lower the frame right down on top of it. Hey, easy as pie. I just got to get it under and bolt the straps on and donezo. It kind of irritates me to use all this junk, but I am going to put the charcoal canister on, mainly just because I have it. And from what I can tell, it just goes click right there. Let's try it. Let's get it clipped in right there. Here's an evap hose that looks like it goes there. And then that one clips onto the gas tank there. Very simple install, actually. A little too simple. What's gonna go wrong? Well, I found it. This plug right here looks like it goes to vent valve or something like that. I think the vent valve is right there. And you can see that there's a place right here where it looks like that red plug may plug into. It's a bit short though. 
Now if we look at our handy dandy Escalade harness again, right here, we got a red plug, EVAP canister, rear. Hmm. Now obviously the Escalade tank is a lot different, but I may be able to cut and join that harness to that one. If you're watching today's video and you're like, man, this guy is all over the place. He has no idea what he's doing. There's no structure. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, it's not always like this. So I figured it out. This has clip facing up, orange is on the right. Over here on the Escalade, clip facing up, orange is on the right. So all I gotta do, strip it back, cut it, join it, plug it in. Got my connector out and I took off uh, four and a half, five feet of wire probably. And now, basically, join it in. I also got a bag of loom here, this small, I think it's quarter, no, it's three eight. So that'll cover those two wires just fine. And I think I'm gonna run it along the frame here and then go back that way. That way I don't have to come across any more hoses and stuff and make it look a little bit tidier anyway. And then it'll just click right up in here. That was a bit of a hard spot, but just gonna put my heat shrink on. I was really trying not to join any wires here. I kind of fooled myself. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I won't join any wires at all on this truck. It'll be great. Everything will plug right in. No harness modification. Nothing to it. Seriously. There we go. Just need a little motivation. Now, assuming the gas tank doesn't leak... We'll get this soldered and it won't blow up. That is again, I'm assuming the gas tank doesn't leak. Also, I'd suggest probably being a lot more responsible than me. Fire right next to the filler hose is not ideal. But I don't have a heat gun, so sometimes you gotta take those unnecessary risks. Maybe instead of buying a new torch, I'll buy a heat gun. Or a soldering, a soldering iron or whatever it is I'm trying to say. Mint. Well, until I get the heads on this thing and I can get the whole front clip bolted on, get the engine harness done and put together, I'm kind of at a bit of a standstill here. So I need to put all the bed and everything on this so I can put it outside. We've got a couple things to do in the shop this week. So I'm going to finish it up here and then dodge on putting it back together so I can pull it out. So thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks to my YouTube members, patrons, and subscribers. If you want to check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash stationroadratrods. My YouTube members link is down here. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.